Well, the news that the NCAA is refusing to reconsider scholarship reductions for USC should be causing some real head shaking and eye rolling over at Heritage Hall. Those penalties were overly harsh in the first place, and tonight they look illogical, maybe even kind of personal, too. First, the NCAA Executive Committee announces this week that it's giving back dozens of scholarships to Penn State because of the school's, quote, continued progress toward ensuring athletic integrity. Then USC AD Pat Hayden flies to Indianapolis to ask for leniency, which made perfect sense, and they basically blow him off? You mean they haven't done the exact same thing at USC? restored athletic integrity. No school busted by the NCAA has been more compliant or more of a model than USC since Hayden took over. And if you're really comparing lack of institutional control, what is more out of control than a respected assistant head coach molesting children inside the Penn State football facility when other coaches and administrators, including the great Joe Paterno, apparently were aware that they had a real creep in their midst. Heck, they even let Jerry Sandusky keep his campus office after they knew he was a pedophile. What could possibly represent less institutional control than that? Yet someone inside the NCAA Executive Committee must have a soft spot for Penn State because they gave them back scholarships, making their football program more whole again. So then why isn't the same thinking, logic, and compassion being applied toward USC? It's fair to argue that current coaches, players, and administrators had nothing at all to do with Reggie Bush's parents taking money from an agent to buy a house down in San Diego, a far more benign transgression, comparatively speaking, than the terrible human toll enacted at Penn State where children's lives have been scarred forever. Doesn't bending the rules to buy a house seem petty compared to two or three decades of child molestation? In this context, the NCAA's punishment of the SC football program, their continued reduction of football scholarships seems haphazard and random. Did the NC2A let it become personal when former AD Mike Garrett fought them every step of the way during the investigation process? It sure looks that way. And to that, finally, we lead to questions we've been meaning to ask for some time now. Namely, just who is the NC2A? Other than President Mark Emmerich, who are the people making these random decisions? What are their names? Why don't we know them? Why don't they identify themselves? And why don't they explain themselves? Have they been vetted? Most of all, why are they treating Penn State and USC so differently?